Hello. Now we will uh, continue to our lecture. Uh, I briefly presented how mechanical systems behave uh, in, ti uh, in time of under the dynamic forces. Uh, now we will continue with vibration measurement and analysis. That's the outline of the uh, first presentation. Uh, that's a typical uh, steps uh, to make uh, a measurement. Uh, uh, we use transducers uh, uh, to measure displacement, velocity, or acceleration. The output of transducer is, is generally low, so we use a preamplifier to uh, increase the magnitude of the signal, uh, the amplitude of the signal. Uh, since that signal will have noise, we have to use filters. Uh, out of the uh, filter, uh, we use generally some detector averager to pick up some characteristics of the uh, signal. Then, finally, we can uh, look at uh, the power spectrum of the signal uh, uh, to uh, get the features of the data. Uh, that's the usual steps. We covered it actually. It's a mechanical system, a gearbox. In time domain, you will see something like this. Uh, for instance, the accelerator, uh, accelerometer uh, placed on the top of the box will uh, give us such a signal. But if you look at its power spectrum, you will see certain peaks. And all these peaks will belong to a certain components. Uh, therefore, by examining the frequency content, we can uh, get conclusions about uh, uh, the uh, uh, components. For instance, if there is a damage in uh, uh, in this gear uh, denoted by A, uh, the location of this peak uh, uh, will change, or the magnitude of that peak will peak uh, peak will increase. Uh, uh, similarly, it's the same for the other peaks. Uh, peak value. So by examining the frequency data, we can uh, make lots of uh, uh, conclusions uh, about this uh, mechanical system. Uh, if you follow these steps, for instance, if you use an accelerometer, we will get such a signal in frequency domain. Uh, it means the measured acceleration uh, uh, at this step will have certain frequency uh, contents. And those peaks correspond to uh, sinusoidals uh, having high uh, amplitudes. So at certain frequencies, uh, the measured acceleration at this point will have high energy. Okay, By using uh, this data, we can make conclusions. Locations of those peaks, magnitudes of those peaks, will tell us about the condition of the uh, attached component. That's what uh, is done to predictive maintenance of aircrafts, critical engine components, uh, uh, again, maintenance of rail cars like Shinkansen. Uh, the, this acceleration that uh, actually uh, ha it has the signature of the mechanical system, very valuable. That's actually uh, typical steps. I covered it. I'll skip. And uh, if we look at the signal, uh, for instance, there are two cases uh, shown here. The first one, for instance, a vibration signal, an accelerometer, for instance, uh, uh, gives us the, uh, measurements. A fan uh, has this spectrum. This is a gearbox. The gearbox has this spectrum. For instance, we have a peak value at this point. Then this peak value uh, is increasing in time. It means uh, there is something uh, uh, is getting older uh, or wearing out in time. So the overall level is increasing in time. By just, for instance, looking at uh, this peak in frequency domain, we can uh, make a conclusion about the condition of the uh, fan. For gearbox, again, for instance, we have a peak uh, at this uh, location. Uh, 
uh, and it's increasing uh, in time. Or uh, this peak, it's increasing in time. And after a certain level, we can say, okay, uh, uh, it's damaged, let's change it. That's how predictive maintenance of components uh, are made. Uh, when you take your car to uh, a, a service station, uh, it's attached to uh, a, a device. It takes some measurements, for instance, by, uh, me, uh, by analyzing these measurements, which is done generally uh, in frequency domain, it, uh, uh, the uh, computer uh, uh, gets uh, some uh, conclusions about the uh, condition of your car uh, or gearbox. When we analyze the data, vibration data, there are some issues. It may be linear or logarithmic, or we can look at the amplitude in decibel. And there are two different scales, decades or octaves. These are actually methods to analyze the data. And the distinction between them, for instance, if you measure the amount of fuel in your car, for instance, this is a linear scale, and your car has uh, uh, very little fuel. Uh, one quarter of the uh, gas tank is full. But if you look at it in logarithmic scale, this logarithmic scale, you can see uh, it's misleading. Uh, it looks like half of the tank is full. So uh, looking at the data uh, in linear scale or in logarithmic scale may mislead us. but. Uh, we use both of them. Why? There is a reason. Again, uh, another term, if you look at a data in linear scale or logarithmic scale, in linear scale, that's one decade, okay, between 0.01 to 0.1. 0.01 to 1 is another decade. You can see, actually, the decades. But in logarithmic scale, the decades have equal lengths, you see, and it makes a distinction. Uh, looking at the data uh, in linear uh, scale or logarithmic uh, scale, uh, it looks like the lower values uh, in this horizontal axis in the, uh, are widened. Uh, actually, you can see better uh, lower va uh, 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 values in the horizontal axis. For instance, you see data on the top, horizontal axis is linear. At the bottom, horizontal axis is logarithmic. And if you look at uh, this uh, low frequency range is expanded when you look at uh, logar uh, in logarithmic uh, scale. So uh, uh, you can see the details at low frequencies. That's why logarithmic uh, uh, scale is used. On the other hand, higher frequency content is shrinked. You see, for instance, uh, 10 uh, kilohertz to 20 kilohertz uh, is actually shrinked. Uh, normally, uh, it's, it's uh, covered uh, uh, over a long uh, range in linear scale. Uh, so high frequency is shrinked, low frequency is expanded, so we can better uh, uh, examine low frequency content uh, in logarithmic scale. That's the main uh, advantage uh, of using uh, logarithmic scale. Another issue uh, we uh, mentioned, when you uh, uh, make a measurement, we filter, uh, we use filters. Uh, we filter the data. And uh, when we filter the data, it has noise. For instance, electricity, uh, all over the world, uh, electricity frequency is 50 hertz or 60 hertz, depending on the country. So when you uh, make an experiment anywhere in the world, you will have noise because of the electricity uh, 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 AC curve frequency at 50 or 60 hertz. Uh, to eliminate those uh, noise uh, content, we use band pass filters. Band pass filters are uh, shown uh, here. In frequency domain, uh, it's actually easy to visualize a band pass filter. You can see uh, it uh, uh, actually filters out uh, certain uh, uh, frequency, uh, 
or cuts out uh, the other uh, uh, frequencies. Uh, for instance, here you can see uh, uh, the filter behaves this way, like a pulse. It has a center frequency of f sub zero, and f sub one and f sub two are two frequencies of this uh, 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 lower and upper bounds of this pulse. Then bandwidth is defined this way f sub 2 minus f sub 1, and center frequency is f sub 0. This is an ideal filter. We cannot have an ideal filter uh, because of the uh, physical realizations. And generally, we end up with such a filter behavior. Uh, you see there's a ripple. Uh, it tries to capture the uh, perfect pulse. And uh, this uh, amount corresponding to minus 3 decibel uh, is called, uh, actually uh, is used for bandwidth definition of this filter. And uh, uh, this is called 3 decibel bandwidth definition because uh, the intersection uh, of uh, filter curve at, uh, at, uh, at this point uh, is used to define the bandwidth. Another definition is called noise bandwidth. In that case, this shaded area uh, is equal to the, uh, the solid area. Uh, that's how uh, noise bandwidth is defined. So we use filters to eliminate the noise, but when we use filters, uh, Generally, we use band pass filter. It only allows to pass certain uh, 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 frequency content. Uh, we cannot capture the perfect pulse. Uh, we use such a curve and two different bandwidth definition. Bandwidth is defined this way, uh, the uh, width of this region in frequency domain. Two bandwidth definitions uh, are used in practice. The first one is this one, 3 decibel bandwidth definition. The other one is noise bandwidth definition, depending on equal uh, area under the curve. Uh, the other uh, case, uh, uh, we use uh, filters, but uh, we use uh, filters have bandwidth. But on the other hand, sometimes we use linear scale, but sometimes we use logarithmic scale. And depending on uh, linear scale or logarithmic scale, we have uh, different bandwidth definitions. For linear scale, for instance, this that's uh, for uh, three dec uh, decibel uh, that. Uh, dashed line corresponds to minus 3 decibel, you have this band. Uh, and depending on uh, bandwidth, for instance, 31.6 hertz or 10 hertz, 3.16 hertz, uh, uh, where these curves uh, intersect minus 3 decibel uh, 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 value uh, gives us uh, this bandwidth. That's actually called constant bandwidth and uh, used in linear uh, scale. For logarithmic scale, we use uh, another one, octal definition. And uh, you can see actually the frequency content is in, uh, 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 shown uh, in, uh, in logarithmic scale. But in this case, again, you can use minus 3 decibel uh, as a threshold, uh, but this filter characteristic is now in logarithmic scale. Again, uh, by using the, in this case, intersections of the curve, you see uh, uh, the octave, one octave, one third octave, three percent octave, they are uh, set. So two different bandwidth definitions exist, constant bandwidth for linear scale or uh, constant percentage bandwidth or uh, relative bandwidth uh, for logarithmic scale. Uh, actually, logarithmic scale is uh, always used for acoustic signals. Uh, linear scale is uh, used uh, for mechanical signals. Uh, and how they look like uh, in uh, uh, frequency domain. For instance, uh, in linear scale, if you have a constant bandwidth uh, uh, filter, it looks like this. Uh, it will pass those signals, for instance. But if you represent it in logarithmic scale, you will see this picture. Uh, that's actually a uh, uh, case uh, because the low frequency uh, range is expanded. Uh, on the other hand, if you do the same, if you do the same for 
e, 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 logarithmic scale, uh, for instance, uh, in logarithmic scale, uh, we have this picture. Uh, it corresponds to, uh, uh, pardon, uh, if, if in logarithmic scale we have this picture, uh, you can see uh, the uh, constant percentage uh, uh, bandwidth uh, filter. Uh, but if you plot it in linear scale, you will see uh, something else. So uh, different uh, bandwidth definitions are used uh, depending on uh, uh, your uh, scale. For linear scale, you use constant bandwidth definition. For logarithmic scale, you use uh, constant percentage uh, uh, bandwidth definition, uh, which is typical for acoustic signals. Uh, uh, that's related to uh, filtering uh, of data. Uh, uh, we covered it, actually. If you, you show the data in logarithmic scale, Low frequency content is uh, expanded, so you can uh, examine the low frequency content much better. Uh, uh, and that's the uh, how of uh, uh, bandwidth effects. Uh, for instance, uh, here uh, we have a filter width. Uh, if the bandwidth is large, you will see such a frequency uh, spectrum uh, of the data. Uh, if bandwidth is uh, uh, lower, uh, you will get refined data. So bandwidth uh, gives us the resolution uh, in frequency domain. That's why it's important uh, selection of bandwidth. Uh, if you increase the actually. If you uh, if you decrease the bandwidth, you increase the computation time, uh, and that's uh, the uh, uh, rule. We should be, uh, we should not uh, play uh, with uh, with it uh, if it is unnecessary. Uh, and the same data is shown here in linear scale and logarithmic scale. For instance, uh, in uh, in linear scale. Low frequency uh, data uh, uh, is not clearly seen, but uh, in logarithmic scale, you can see actually uh, the uh, uh, low frequency content uh, can be uh, examined much easily. Uh, also, uh, uh, you, you can see uh, the peaks of uh, especially uh, low frequency data uh, is uh, larger. Uh, uh, if we use uh, logarithmic scale in horizontal scale uh, or in horizontal axis, generally we also use logarithmic scale for vertical axis. In that case, those peaks are also uh, increased uh, due to the, uh, the definition of uh, logarithm. Uh, you can see actually, for instance, if you look at this data in linear scale, you cannot uh, see the details. But in logarithmic scale, you can see all these uh, variations uh, very well. So logarithmic scale helps us a lot. So in order to uh, examine data, that data may be uh, coming from a mechanical system or an electronic system, or maybe coming from stock exchange data or temperature uh, measurements. Uh, logarithmic scale uh, uh, in horizontal axis and logarithmic scale in vertical axis help us a lot uh, to see the details uh, of the signal, uh, the characteristics of the signal. Uh, uh, there's, a, there's a term, uh, decibel. Decibel is defined this way. Decibel means uh, 10 times uh, logarithm uh, based on 10 uh, of this ratio. There's a reference value. This reference value is generally a ref is selected as 1. Uh, and this is equal to 20 times logarithm 10 a over uh, a reference. That's how uh, uh, decibel is used. And this axis shows decibel definition and acceleration definition. For instance, 60 decibel corresponds to 1,000 meter per square second. Uh, uh, decibel is frequently used, uh, frequently used in uh, vib uh, vibration uh, analysis. 
we covered it actually. Forces cause, uh, forces pass through the system and cause vibrations. And these are the uh, force types, uh, structural parameters, and vibration parameters we use. These are typical uh, decibel and acceleration levels. For instance, in a building, uh, you have zero decibel or this much uh, meter per square second uh, acceleration in a uh, constant building. Uh, washing machine or, uh, a, a, for instance, a CNC machine, uh, they generally have uh, one meter per square second uh, acceleration or 120 uh, decibel. Explosion, one million uh, meter per square uh, second uh, acceleration uh, uh, and uh, this uh, uh, drill uh, to remove payments uh, also they cause this much uh, 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 signal uh, they are uh, it's equal to 240 decibel uh, so this table show us uh, uh, show us uh, typical uh, values we may encounter in real life. Uh, what happens uh, if we use different parameters to analyze a vibration? For instance, you are going to make major vibrations on a train or, or in a vehicle or uh, on a CNC machine. Uh, what should we measure? Acceleration, velocity, or displacement? Uh, if you measure the displacement, uh, in frequency domain, its magnitude drops out because under this curve, uh, uh, we have an area, and that's proportional to energy of the signal. Uh, so we, we cannot have infinite energy, so this curve should die out. Velocity, you see almost constant curve. Acceleration continuously uh, increasing. Uh, because when we calculate velocity, we multiply the uh, displacement magnitude with frequency. Uh, uh, natural frequency for acceleration, square of natural frequency. So if we continue, uh, what should we measure? Actually, what should we measure depends on uh, signal types. For instance, there are three cases, measurement A, measurement B, measurement C. Uh, for instance, in this case, if you look at displacement is almost constant, velocity is increasing, acceleration is increasing in frequency domain. Uh, as frequency increases, actually, uh, displacement signal uh, almost uh, has uh, a constant. So in this case, we should choose displacement uh, to uh, examine the signal. If velocity is almost constant among the, those three signals, we should measure velocity and examine velocity. Uh, and in the last case, if acceleration is almost constant and the others two are changing, uh, in uh, changing uh, a lot, then we should choose acceleration. So uh, we have to use uh, 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 the signal uh, which is closest to be stationary. Uh, in this case, a measurement uh, uh, result is shown. It's RMS value, peak value, peak to peak value. Uh, the signal is changing in time. Uh, it, it, may, it may be uh, coming from another signal. For instance, in this case, uh, a noise uh, added up to a step, then it dies out. Again, we can, uh, def uh, we can uh, define those parameters uh, for this signal too. Uh, that's what this device uh, does. Uh, we made measurement, we preamplified the signal increase the uh, amplitude of the signal. Then we did filter uh, because it has noise, the signal has noise. Then after that, we uh, use a detector, averager, uh, 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 to find uh, signals, RMS value, peak value, peak to peak value, uh, etc. Uh, and these are the uh, typical uh, uh, definitions of these uh, parameters. For instance, uh, in that case, uh, this device, uh, 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 if you use average, uh, for this, we, if you use average, uh, uh, for instance, we have a time domain data. Uh, 
uh, in that case, averaging time becomes important. If averaging time is one second, we will see uh, such a curve for vibration level. It will uh, die out faster. Uh, but if averaging time is long, then you will see uh, uh, a signal close to uh, very uh, uh, steady uh, behavior. Uh, so choosing an appropriate averaging time is important. Uh, for chemical uh, processes or uh, thermal systems, uh, the averaging time may be large, but mechanical systems behave very fast, so averaging time should be uh, very low. Uh, we make measurements. For instance, we can make a measurement on a CNC machine in a factory, or we apply an excitation. This is the model analysis hammer. Uh, we apply its force, then we make some measurements. We take some outputs. So uh, in this case, we can uh, make a signal analysis uh, on this machine, or uh, by applying a force and making a measurement, we can apply, uh, we, we can complete a system analysis uh, for this structural system. So uh, in both cases, we use actually vibrational signals. And when we uh, use vibrational signals, these are the steps uh, which we should choose the correct parameters, displacement, velocity, acceleration. So uh, it should be presented correct way, linear or logarithmic scale. We can use filters, and there are two uh, kinds of filters. For uh, dif uh, they are different for linear scale or logarithmic scale, and uh, the s s signal may be used uh, to uh, uh, make conclusion about uh, the system. Uh, when we make measurements, there are. Oh. When we make measurements. Uh, when we make measurements, actually, we use transducers. These are the actually uh, transducers, uh, vibration transducers, piezoelectric accelerometers, uh, how to choose them uh, and how to use them. Uh, these are uh, important. These are the steps, actually, in an experimental study uh, on uh, vibrations. We can feel the vibration, for instance, by a finger. It's an uh, early method. We can use a bar. Again, uh, you can feel the vibration level. Or you can use a stethoscope, actually, uh, to hear the vibrations. But modern methods depend on measurement and evaluation of measurements. For instance, this is a mechanical uh, lever uh, attached to a shaft. So uh, if you... Uh, uh, look, uh, examine the vibrations, uh, uh, you can actually uh, get a conclusion about the uh, uh, damage uh, in the system. Uh, vibration transducers, actually, mechanical rivers, uh, they are not used. Uh, now, today, we use uh, sensors. Uh, one of the sensor type is eddy current proximity probes. It can measure uh, the distances uh, between two components uh, without any contact, uh, relative motion, shaft, eccentricity, oil film thickness, etc. Uh, can be measured by uh, eddy current uh, probes. Uh, in many practical applications, eddy current probes are used. As this, as this distance changes between the probe and the uh, metal component, uh, actually we get a signal proportional to the distance. That's how you measure the distance and uh, we get data. Uh, about vibrations. These are the actually uh, range. Up to 2000 hertz you can use it. Uh, that's why actually for high frequency content we don't use it. We use, uh, we use uh, piezoelectric accelerometers. To measure velocity we can use uh, actually this kind of coil. Uh, this we call taco generators. It's, it's uh, good in the range 10 to 1,000 hertz. Uh, and as the metal component moves, it generates an electricity. That's how you get information about the vibration velocity. Uh, again, uh, these are advantages, disadvantages, and practical knowledge about it. Uh, and the 
most frequently used sensor is the piezoelectric accelerometers. You can see we place the sensor uh, and uh, as the piezo crystals are uh, uh, squeezed uh, due to the vibration uh, of the uh, sensor, it generates a voltage and by uh, measuring it actually we can uh, uh, find the acceleration uh, of the uh, component. Uh, actually that's the most widely used uh, uh, sensor f to measure vibrations. These are the advantages uh, of using uh, piezoelectric actuators and these are the types of piezoelectric actuators. Shear type it measures uh, by applying a shear load to piezo crystals. Uh, compression type, uh, another design, theta shear, annular shear, delta shear, orto shear. Anyway, different kinds of uh, uh, piezoelectric uh, accelerometers are uh, set, uh, defined. Simplest, uh, actually, compression type gives a moderate high sensitivity mass ratio, uh, and shear type. Uh, has the advantage of uh, 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 being insensitive to environmental parameters like temperature uh, and base strains. So each type has certain uh, application fields. Uh, if you look at the uh, practical applications of these sensors, for instance, eddy currents are used in this uh, range. Having low frequency, you can see, uh, and uh, relative amplitude is again low, 100 to 1. Velocity transducers, uh, uh, DC tacos actually uh, in this range, again it's relatively, uh, it's relatively uh, uh, have low amplitudes and again its frequency range is uh, uh, so, uh, uh, lower uh, than uh, piezoelectric accelerometers, but if you look at piezoelectric accelerometers, up to 100 kilohertz you can use them, so it covers almost all range. That's why today piezoelectric accelerometers are used uh, uh, in almost all practical applications. On the other hand, depending on the sensor weight, you can see uh, how uh, the uh, features of the sensor change. For instance, detectable acceleration and frequency range change uh, depending on the s uh, size and mass of the uh, sensor. If it is 10 to 50 uh, gram, it's th that's the measure of its sensitivity. Its sensitivity is large, but it's also heavy. It's, uh, detectable acceler uh, acceleration uh, is uh, up to 100,000 meter per square second and highest frequency is up to 12 kilohertz. On the other hand, for uh, uh, high frequency uh, signals uh, and high acceleration values, 250,000 meter per square second, you can use smaller uh, accelerometers. Uh, its sensitivity is lower, it means you have to p use a large gain to amplify the signal. Uh, sensitivity is, uh, you can see in this range, uh, these are the typical values uh, uh, you can run into uh, uh, in uh, market. That's the frequency response of an uh, accelerometer. You see actually the accelerometer uh, uh, has a natural frequency and up to this uh, separation we use it uh, and it's called you can see actually for a large frequency range it has a constant response then the response curve increases approximately 10 percent increment uh, is called uh, the upper bound of uh, for frequency uh, 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 you use it uh, that's how uh, uh, the uh, upper bound uh, frequency is uh, set uh, for piezoelectric accelerators. Uh, as the sensor gets smaller, you have larger, uh, actually, 
natural frequency so you can use it at higher frequencies but it's m very expensive the smaller ones uh, f for large ones for instance for uh, to measure earthquake waves uh, they use so very large ones uh, you can actually uh, get very high sensitivities uh, about natural frequencies very low but earthquake waves have low frequency content so large uh, piezo uh, sensors uh, are suitable uh, uh, to be placed on uh, buildings. How to fix the uh, sensor? We can use adhesive tape, so we get this uh, frequency curve, or stud, uh, we can use a stud, that blue curve, uh, cementing stud, and stud mounting, this red curve. So the highest frequency is Obtained, uh, obtained for start mounting. Uh, that's the best way to fix the sensor, uh, it means, if we examine these three curves. On the other hand, if we use a probe, if you use a handheld probe, you'll get such a frequency response curve. That's inverted probe, that one a magnet. So lowest frequencies handheld uh, uh, lowest, lowest, lowest frequencies of handheld probe, highest frequencies of magnet. Uh, so that's the best way how to uh, uh, mount uh, a handheld accelerometer uh, that frequency response curves uh, uh, give us. Uh, on the other hand, sometimes the component may be hot. Uh, so if we attach the sensor, we use uh, a washer. Uh, we use either, you can see a mica washer, so you will have such a curve, or sometimes we use uh, uh, a, a component, a mechanical filter, as you see here, to protect against high shocks. So using such a mechanical filter may cause deviation in frequency response, so we should be careful uh, when you mount a sensor uh, to a location to measure the uh, frequency. Uh, we should place the sensor d uh, directly uh, close to the component. For instance, in this case, it's not good. Again, this is far away if, uh, from the uh, bearing. For instance, we will measure the bearing vibrations. That's bad. Uh, we should put it as close uh, to the component as possible. Uh, the best choice is this uh, A. For instance, in this case, this one will pick up the vibrations of this uh, cover. That's why uh, A or C is very uh, uh, suitable, but not the others are not. Uh, there's a rule if you attach a sensor to a component, its mass should be one -tenth, uh, less than one tenth of the uh, uh, component. Uh, that's how we choose the size of the, uh, for instance, accelerometer. That's valid for the other uh, sensor types uh, also. Uh, if we measure a signal in one direction, for instance, acceleration in uh, vertical direction, it will be affected by the uh, vibrations in other directions too. For instance, generally, uh, uh, the cross uh, 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 affection uh, is uh, less than 4%. Uh, so we should uh, think about this uh, transverse sensitivity when we place the sensor. It will be affected by the vibrations in other directions. Uh, so electric uh, currents uh, will generate uh, noise in the cables. So we should uh, take measurement. We, we should use coaxial BNC co uh, covers to uh, eliminate uh, uh, electrical noise uh, due to the especially uh, uh, AC currents uh, uh, frequency. Uh, the base strain, corrosive substances or humidity, acoustic noise, magnetic field or radiation may cause all vi measurements. Uh, also, we should be uh, uh, careful about it and take measurements. These are special accelerometer types, uh, uh, calibration accelerometers, triaxial uh, accelerometer, high temperature or shock accelerometers. These are different types of accelerometers. If you drop those 
uh, sensors, generally they are very sensitive devices. It generates very large uh, signals inside the sensor. It may get damaged. By just dropping it to the ground, uh, uh, you may totally uh, damage uh, the sensor. We should be careful. Uh, for these sensors, there are calibration charts. Uh, it shows how uh, the uh, original response uh, of the sensor. Uh, it should be checked frequently. These are actually typical for uh, uh, accelerometers. Uh, we use those uh, piezoelectric uh, accelerometers to uh, measure force. That's actually shown here uh, how we can use it as a force transducer. I'll skip it. It's not our purpose. We just focus on vibration. Uh, their uh, measurements may change in time. They may age. So we should frequently calibrate them. C calibration uh, should uh, generally every year we calibrate them. And uh, for uh, calibration, there are special uh, calibration sensors we use. We co compare uh, their measurements with the calibration uh, sensors. Uh, there may be resonance actually uh, 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 in the accelerometer, and there are uh, methods uh, to check it. Actually, uh, calibration. This is shown actually how to measure two sensors are uh, checked. Measurement of one sensor and measurement of two sensors are uh, made simultaneously and they are compared to each other. Uh, this is uh, sensor output is preamplified. Actually, we just increase the amplitude of the signal because the signal uh, level is low. That's shown uh, how it is done. Uh, it shows. And in terms of sensor types, there are two uh, 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 Preamplifier, uh, preamplifiers uh, used in practice. One of them is voltage, the other one is charge amplifier. Voltage amplifiers uh, actually uh, are affected uh, by uh, length of the cables. That's why actually it's not preferred. We generally use charge amplifier uh, in uh, experimentation. Uh, and the uh, Electronic circuit of voltage amplifier and charge amplifier, they are given here. What's the distinction between them? Uh, these are uh, preamplifier uh, types. Most of the time, the preamplifier is attached to the uh, sensor inside. You can see actually uh, uh, sensor uh, having embedded uh, preamplifier. When we use uh, Sensors. We also uh, consider the uh, ground loop, uh, so they all uh, all the system should be con uh, attached to the same uh, ground loop. Otherwise, we will get uh, 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 errors in measurements. Uh, so you can see actually how ground loop uh, uh, noise affects all measurements. So. Uh, all of the uh, all devices, including sensors, should be connected to the same ground loop. Uh, it shows uh, it, it's written there. And then I complete my presentation uh, with a brief conclusion. So we should select the right transducer. Uh, the preamplifier uh, 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 should be used uh, because the sensor outputs are very uh, 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 low. Uh, and uh, measurement uh, system should be considered, ground loop connections, they should be considered. Uh, how to attach the sensor to the component should be considered carefully. Uh, and here, there are some rules. All the system, uh, measurement system, uh, sensor, they should be all connected to the same ground loop. Uh, these are the uh, uh, main points of this presentation. I conclude my uh, presentation uh, with this presentation. Thanks for listening.